Ohm's Law. This law describes the basic quantities present in any electrical circuit. This will be a very important law for this core tutorial. Basic electric circuit. Note the diagram pictured here. In a circuit, the electrons are flowing or moving. They are not stationary or static. Note how the electron repeats the same path or circuit. Sign conventions. Again, in our same example circuit. Electrons will obviously move from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. Electrons would be repelled by the negative and attracted to the positive. However, long ago it was thought that positive charge flowed. This convention remains today. So, conventional current is usually described as moving from positive to negative. This is the direction that we typically use. Most of the time, the actual direction of current flow is really unimportant. Common schematic symbols. When drawing or diagramming electric circuits, certain symbols are used. For example, wires are simply drawn as lines. A switch is an interrupted or broken line. A light bulb looks similar to a light bulb with the filament in the middle. A battery or voltage source is drawn as uneven lines. An AC voltage is a curve. A capacitor, two parallel lines. An ammeter is the letter A, and a voltmeter is the letter V. Finally, a resistor is a jagged or sawtooth-like line. Current. Current describes the number of electrons flowing in a circuit. It's very analogous to water flowing through a hose or a pipe. However, it doesn't count the actual number of electrons. That would be far too difficult and cumbersome. Because in general, many millions and millions of electrons flow through most circuits. Amperes. Current is typically measured in amperes, or amps for short, and an amp is equal to a coulomb per second. This means that one coulomb of charge passes by each second. Now, since an amp is a relatively large amount of current, we will often use other units like milliamps. Remember, 1000 milliamps equals an amp. Direct current or DC. Here, the charge flows in one direction only, as the name implies. In a wire, which is connected or carrying DC current, the electrons move in one single direction. Examples are batteries. Batteries of all types provide DC or direct current. alternating current, or AC. Here, electrons in the circuit move in one direction, but then switch and flow in the opposite direction. Here's our conducting wire again. Note these electrons in alternating current. Examples of AC current include regular wall outlets, like are found in your home. AC frequency. Since AC current changes direction, or oscillates, you can describe how often it changes that direction. In the US, all outlets use a frequency of 60 Hz. This means the electrons change direction, move back and forth, 60 times every single second. Adapters, or transformers. Often, it's useful to convert AC into DC or vice versa. You've probably used a device such as this. To save batteries, this would be plugged into a radio or CD player, for example, 
and then into the AC wall outlet. This converts AC current into DC current to run your appliance. Changing current types. To facilitate the previous process, diodes are used. They allow electrons to flow in only one direction. This helps change AC into DC. This is a one-way path for electrons. Take a look at this transformer. Note the input and output voltages mentioned and the frequency is given also. This would contain diodes to help change AC into DC. Voltage sources. No current will flow unless there is a voltage source. This is also known as a potential difference. Sometimes this potential difference is supplied by batteries. As we already mentioned, a direct current would flow. Electric potential analogy. Imagine a rock laying on level ground. It obviously will not move anywhere or roll. No current since there is no difference in elevation, no voltage, or electric potential. Electron flow. On the other hand, an object at the top of a hill could roll down, current flowing, because of the elevation difference. There is an electric potential difference, or voltage. Shocking experience. To receive a shock, as we previously mentioned, there must be a voltage difference applied to you. These electrons must, in effect, be rolling downhill. This is often referred to as an electric potential difference. A bird on a wire. You've probably noticed how a bird can sit on a high voltage wire, possibly at thousands of volts, and receive no shock at all. Its entire body is at the same high voltage. There is no voltage difference, so no current flows. On the other hand, if that same bird simultaneously touches the ground, the tower, or a wire with a different voltage, then there would be a large voltage difference, and the current would flow. Grounding. To prevent electric shock, most modern cords have a third prong that is used to ground the cord. This prong is literally connected to the earth or the ground through the wires in the wire and then in the home. If there are any extra electrons, they are immediately sent to the ground, not through you. Electrical resistance. In almost all circuits, the electrons flow with some opposition or resistance. This resistance is measured in units called ohms. You may recall this from a previous tutorial. The symbol for ohms is the Greek letter omega. Here are some resistors from a circuit board. Analogy. As we've already mentioned, there are many similarities between electric circuits and water circuits. Here are some similarities. A hose is like a wire, carrying water or carrying electrons. A pump is like a voltage, pushing water or pushing electrons. And a valve is like a switch, controlling the flow of water or electrons. Ohm's Law. Mr. Ohm, thus the name, discovered an extremely useful relationship. Voltage equals current times resistance. Our current in amperes, our voltage or electric potential in volts, and our resistance in ohms. Ohm's Law Example. Let's say a light bulb operates on a 110 volt circuit, like most of the outlets in your home. The bulb draws a current of 0.91 amps, 
what is the resistance of that light bulb. We'll be using Ohm's law. However, in this case, we're looking for the resistance, not the voltage. We've got both the voltage and the current, which gives us a resistance of about 120.8 ohms. Internal resistance. You may measure the potential difference of a battery at 9 volts. Here's your battery. You may measure it with a device and obtain a reading of exactly 9 volts. Voltage difference. However, if you take that same battery, insert it into a circuit, and measure its voltage again, you may find it's somewhat lower. Now we get a reading of only 8.5 volts. It's the same battery. What's happening? Internal resistance diagram. This difference is due to the internal resistance of the battery itself. It's as if the battery contains an additional resistor. Once the battery is hooked into a circuit, there's current flowing. When this current encounters even minor resistance in the battery, there is some voltage drop when compared to earlier. This accounts for our difference in measurements. EMF. When in a circuit, the reduced voltage is referred to as the terminal voltage. The terminals on a battery. The potential difference when nothing is connected is referred to as the EMF, or electromotive force. This term may be misleading because it has nothing to do with the traditional notion of force. Lost voltage. When you take away the lost voltage due to the internal resistance from the EMF, the remaining voltage is the terminal voltage. We can think of this as EMF minus I times R of the battery equals our terminal voltage, or EMF minus our lost voltage equals our terminal voltage. Energy conservation. Energy or voltage is still conserved. Some is simply used up by the internal resistance of the battery itself. So don't think of this as voltage or energy that is actually lost in terms of it disappearing. The actual internal resistance of most batteries is very small, usually less than an ohm. Internal resistance example. As in the previous discussion, the 9 volt battery has a terminal voltage of 8.5 volts when connected to a 100 ohm resistor. What is the internal resistance of this battery? Internal resistance solution. First, it may be useful to find the current. Here we can use Ohm's law, but rearranged for I. We get a current of 0 0.085 amps. This is the current flowing through our circuit, which means this is the current flowing through the battery also. Then, use our idea, or previous description, of internal resistance. Our EMF is 9 volts. We just calculated the current flowing through the battery, and we don't know the resistance of the battery. The terminal voltage was given as 8.5 volts. In this equation, we have one unknown, the R of the battery. Rearrange to solve for that, and we get an internal resistance of the battery of about 5.88 ohms.